welcome to Church Online. It's Sunday, the best day of the week. Thank you so much for joining us. We are so excited about what God is going to do in our lives today and we are thrilled to be able to bring our service to you right in your home. This is such an exciting way we get to do church and get to do it together. Church Online is going to be an incredible, God-filled time and we pray you feel the presence of God right in your home. It is also completely interactive, so you can talk to our pastors, ask for prayer and respond to the word. Now the GP worship team are about to lead us in worship before Pastor Jeff brings a powerful, life-filled message straight from the heart of God. We hope you really enjoy the service. Now jump to your feet and get ready to worship. your name every knee will bow down every heart it cries out for you have shown us who you are is that your name all oppression will cease and a blanket of peace will cover all who are in come on till i stand in awe of all you've done Where the 
Till I lay my head And I will sing Of the goodness of God And all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest nights. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. The goodness of God. Oh, and all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, and I will say. Mummy and baby. Number four. Number four. And I'm Zach. I'm behind the camera.
What are you making, Cheva? Cookies. Even though we aren't here together in person, you still have the opportunity to give as the work of the church still continues on. Ways to give will come up on the screen now or you can check out our online giving video on our church website. Giving to church is as easy as sending a text message. To get started, text the word GIVE to 07 44 609 You'll receive a reply linking you to the setup page. Securely enter your information and you're all set. Now you're ready to give anywhere at any time. Just enter the amount and you'll receive a confirmation text and an email receipt. Made a mistake? No problem. Just takes refund in a reply. You can also give from our church website by going to www.gpastures.co.uk forward slash give. Or finally, you can give from our church app. Find this at www.gpastures.co.uk forward slash app. family home. I went to church every Sunday. I asked Jesus into my life at age three. I never really thought much more about it until I was about 15. God really showed me that he's there for us every day and not just a Sunday and that it's a relationship with him every day um, and it's not a religion thing, it's not a you must do this but it's I want to go to church because of my relationship with him and wanting to know him more. Then my brother Tom was born and that started our new normal life. And um, Tom was born with spina bifida and hydrocephalus. Um, and in Tom's case, he was born with half his spine missing in his bag open and too much pain in his brain. Um, that meant Tom had his first surgery at a day old to close his bag and his second surgery and first brain surgery. Um, at a week old, Tom, in his nearly 16 years of life, has had over 100 operations. Growing up in that uncertainty, sometimes you kind of start to wonder where's God in it all. Tom took really unwell about three years ago and ended up having five brain operations in a week and a half. And that kind of hurts when you're sitting there trying to do something and you want to do something, but there's nothing that you can do. I was crying and I was like, God, why are you doing this? Like, if you were good, why are you doing this? And he basically said, be still on the man God. And um, that just kind of has resonated throughout everything that I do now, is just to be still and know that he is God and that he has got it. Um, it may not be from him, but he will use it for our good and his glory. Bouncing now sort of to my life at the minute, it's just been completely switched around for lockdown. 
Um, I got the phone call standing on work to say that my wedding that was planned for the 16th of May was not going to happen um, because of coronavirus, because of a virus. Confusion and anger just started to build up going, God, why? If you really cared, why could you let this happen? It says in Ecclesiastes 3 and 1 that there is a season for everything. Um, a time and a place for everything under heaven um, and I just have to trust him that our new wedding date tomorrow my wonderful fiance Arn is on the 10th of September and we are just praying that this is the right time that God has said it. Also sort of in this season my world flipped with um, I work at Causeway Hospital and as a catering assistant and I love my job, I love the people I work with um, but due to Tom's health and due to making sure that we keep him safe. We, as a family, decided to come in self-isolation and to all come off work. So I am just trusting God for every finance in my life um, and that his grace will show up in this. Trust God in this time and um, use it to lean on him, use it to find more of a relationship with him and really realise what God wants to do in this season and the purpose of this season. It may not be from him, but he will use it for our good and his glory. And I just have to trust that in every step and know that God has got it and that we just have to trust him. Beyond all men.
Hello everybody, thanks for joining us uh, again today. We never take for granted your time and so thanks for tuning in with us today. Last week we started a, a two week series on fear and in order to defeat fear in our lives we were looking at Jesus who experienced tremendous fear in the Garden of Gethsemane but yet defeated that fear and did what his father sent him to do. We were looking at three reasons why Jesus experienced uh, fear in this life. And so last week, the number one reason why Jesus experienced fear was, was that so, as God, he could identify with the feelings of our weaknesses. It's good to know that we have a God who knows what it's like to be me. Then the number two reason Jesus experienced fear was because as God, he had full knowledge of everything he was about to go through. He was fully man, but he was also fully God. A lot of us have fear because of what we don't know and the uncertainty of tomorrow, but Jesus knew exactly what he was about to fear, uh, face on the cross. And he lived with the knowledge of it his whole life. It was his destiny. It was why he came to save mankind from the torment of the judgment to come. So let's pray together before we get started. Lord, we come before you today and Lord, our world is so full of fear right now. And God, we, we pray that we would know that you could help us, Lord, in these times. Lord, we know that you would never want your children to fear in this world. And so, Lord, will you help us? Will you help us? to be like Jesus. Would you help us to be able to overcome our fears today, Lord? Because we ask it in Jesus' lovely name. Amen. So then today, the number three reason that Jesus experienced fear in the garden was that he was under a full scale assault from Satan and the spirit of fear. And so let me give you one scripture that sets this fear thing out in the open for us. First John chapter 4 verse 18, we read it last week, says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out all fear, because fear involves torment. But he who fears is not made perfect in love. Which means, and here's what it means, it's important that you and I can grasp this, because it's the known here on the inside, the love of God. And, and when I know it, and when I believe it, it will cast out fear. And to still have fear present in my life means I haven't fully comprehended the vastness of the love of God for me. Because if I did, and that's not to say fear will not confront me in life, but the knowing of his perfect love towards me will cast out that fear. You see, love and fear cannot coexist. Uh, did you get that? Are you with me on that? Because, uh, and so let's go to Luke chapter 4 and verse 13. Remember when Jesus was fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, at the end of which Satan, we know, attacked him. And it says in verse 13, Now when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from Jesus until an opportune time. Here is what you need to understand about the nature and the concept of who Satan is. He is an opportunist. When you are at your weakest, he will come at you the strongest. If you're a kind person and you see someone is hurting, if there is any kindness in you at all, you'll let up. But understand, Satan is the opposite. When you are hurting, when he presses in all the more. There is no kindness in him at all. He is such a bad, evil person. And so in the Garden of Gethsemane, Satan sees Jesus in a moment of weakness. And the Lord Jesus is feeling fear. And he's asking his father, if there's any other way, but Lord, not my will, but yours. And Satan comes full on at him. But this time he comes with the spirit of fear and he, he attacks Jesus. So then let's try to understand what fear is in the Bible. Fear is not a something, it's a someone. Let me repeat that. Fear is not a something, it's a someone. Turn in your Bibles to 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. 
The Bible tells us what fear really is. And I want you to listen to this. Verse 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So fear, according to the Bible, is a spirit being. Fear is a spirit. I personally believe the spirit of fear hangs out with the spirit of death. And it is the torment that comes with rebellion against God. And that fear of the spirit of fear brings with it the feeling of the impending judgment of God and the fires of hell. Herein is where fear brings with it the torment of knowing its end. And that's why we as believers are told in scripture to put on the helmet of our salvation. And it's why people who are not saved have this foreboding fear of death. You see, the helmet of salvation guards our minds from tormented fear because now we have the assurance I've been saved from that judgment by faith in the blood of Jesus who took all my punishment on the cross in my place. That means I have entered into a father-child relationship with the Lord. I have been adopted into the family of God where there is no place for that spirit of fear. Respect for God, yes, but not fear because fear is a spirit that has the torment of judgment to come. And, uh, and Abba Father <coughs> would never torment his children. So child of God, when fear comes at you, remind yourself of your salvation. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, <coughs> but he has given you three other things. Power, love, and a sound mind. Not to be tormented by the spirit of fear ever again. God would never ask us to do something we cannot do. The devil cannot control your thoughts. Only you can do that. But he will try to influence and bombard your thoughts. And when we are at our weakest, he will want to whisper thoughts of fear and death to us that contradict our faith and our believing. And so instead of Instead, this is what we read from the prophet Isaiah in chapter 26 and verse 3. He says, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. Why? Because we trust in the Lord. Satan wants us to entertain doubt in our Father's love. And then he can control our decisions by the, fear, the spirit of fear. Hear me, God will never use fear to control your life. Let me repeat that. God will never, never, say never. He will never use fear and torment to control your life. It's his amazing grace that relieves our fears. Are you with me? Give me a thumbs up if you are on Facebook and you agree. So then, when the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, it is saying the revering or the respecting of God is the beginning of wisdom. We run to a loving God to be saved. We run from the spirit of fear which has torment. Fear torments us into running into the arms of a loving God. If you understand the concept and the character of God, then that is the beginning of wisdom. It's amazing grace. God has not given us a spirit of fear. He will never bring the spirit of fear into your life to cause you to do anything. Only Satan will do that. And, and, and I believe you're listening well. So let's go to John 14, 15 to 27. If you love me, keep my commands. And I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he dwells with you and he will be with you and in you. Now there's communion, closer than my skin, right there. Verse 18, I will not leave you orphans, he says. I will come to you a, a little while longer and the world will see me no more. But you will see me because I live, you will live also. At that day you will know that I am in the Father and you in me and I in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him, and I will manifest myself to him. 
Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered and said to him, if anybody loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and he will come to you and make our home with you. He who does not love me does not keep my words and the word which you hear is not mine, but the father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while being present with you. But the helper, oh I love this, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to you, to your remembrance, all things that I said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. You see, it's driven by love and not a spirit of fear. Amen. Love will cause you to keep your commitments to the one you love. Romans 2 verse 4 says, it's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. You see, fear involves control and it involves torment. And God will not control us or torment us. He gives us choice. That's important to be sure about. Only Satan does that. Fear has torment and not peace. We read in Hebrews 2 verse 14 and 15. And as much then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he, that is Jesus himself, likewise shared in the same. That through death, Jesus, he might destroy him who had the power of death. That is the devil. Did you get that? The devil had the power of death and Jesus came to, verse 15, release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. All fear results from the fear of death. But Jesus said to Mary and Martha in John 11, verse 25 and 26, listen to what he says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, Though his corrupted container or body will die, though he die, he shall live. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe that? Do you believe that as a believer? Understand that you will never experience the death angel and his icy touch. You will never be buried in a casket. Your sin corrupted body will be there. But your spirit and soul will live on, absent from the body, but present with the Lord. The instant you close your eyes on this earth, they will open, absent from the body, or present with the Lord. And so when the devil comes to put the fear on you, understand fear. Fear is a prophet angel from hell to give us a negative belief in the future, to cause us to make fear-based decisions and not faith-based decisions. God cannot honour a fear-based decision. Faith is from the Spirit of God to give you to have a positive view of the future so that we will make a faith-based decision that God will honour. Satan is always bombarding us with fear. He shows us films of terrible events that might happen to get you fearful. So you will make decisions out of fear to cause you to not believe the plans of God for you, which are for good. God is saying to you today, faith in God's word gives you courage. That's why as parents, we ought never, never to expose our kids to horror movies. We are exposing them to the spirit of fear that brings torment into their wee lives. And that especially applies to Halloween. Duh. That's French for dumb. Thank God we have a saviour that acted above his fears. Jesus felt fear, but he did not let it control him. He conquered it because he believed in God's promises to him. There is, of course, some good fear. Someone swerves into your lane and you react in response. It was probably Pastor Jackie. But the devil's fear is a demonic paralyzing thing. And so here's the difference between good fear and bad fear. Good fear is circumstantial. I only feel that fear momentarily because someone swerved into my lane. Bad fear, Satan's fear, 
is perpetual. It hangs over you. It's perpetual. Fear is expect the expectation of torment. Faith is the expectation of God doing good, and we choose to keep our eyes on him. Good fear is instructive. Bad fear is tormenting. Good fear is empowering. Bad fear is enslaving. It's the devil who brings fear and torment to us. Do you understand that? Isaiah 48 and 22 says, and this is awful, there is no peace for the wicked, says the Lord. One of the things that happens when you run from God and don't listen to his wisdom and do your own thing, what happens is that you are running away from peace. Peace becomes more absent from your life. Peace is God's property. It comes with his presence. Disobedience robs you of his peace. The devil doesn't have any peace, just torment. That's why people living in rebellion to God have no peace. And so as much as you know the presence of God by peace, you will know the presence of Satan by fear. And so you need a rethink on your thinking about fear. When fear shows up, it doesn't mean that you're demon possessed, but that it means that Satan in your moment of temptation and in your moment of weakness is sending the spirit of fear who is trying to bully you into making a decision that is contrary to the will of God for you. To cause you to let go of your faith and your believing. And faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So when you have heard the word, the spirit of fear comes to snatch it away and make you operate in the opposite direction to what your faith is saying. Jesus rules by peace because he is the Prince of Peace. The devil rules by fear. So here is how to overcome fear like Jesus did. Come on, let's go. Number one. Carry your fears to Abba. Admit your fear without shame. Don't be ashamed and don't try to hide it. He knows. He knows. We all feel it. When Satan is in it, he will want you to hide it and he will put shame on it so that you won't admit it. But it won't go away until you bring it into the light. Jesus says, Daddy, I'm experiencing fear. The Son of God went before his God and said, Father, if there's any way, I'm so afraid of this. And the end of fear's voice in our lives is when we hear Father speak to us on the matter. Understand fear is an ente. It's not natural. It is an ente. And it's from Satan. It's a spirit of fear. So take it to Daddy in prayer. Tell Abba, I'm afraid. I know this doesn't come from you, Lord, because the Bible says that you would not give me a spirit of fear. So the number one thing to do to overcome fear is carry your fears to God and wait to hear his word. Then number two, and you're listening well, th the second thing to do to overcome fear is this. Submit your fears to God. Say, Lord, not my will, but yours be done. You go to God and you say, Lord, I feel fear right now. Give me your courage. Courage is not the absence of the spirit of fear. Courage is the mastery over the spirit of fear. Jesus died for each one of us. He felt fear, but he acted above his fears and was obedient unto death. And so as believers, we hear God and we act above the emotion to fear. Listen, there will be many times in life when you're feeling anger and you have to act above it. You feel the temptation for revenge but you act above it. It's difficult, but with God, all things are possible. And so you submit your anger to the judge of all the earth and knowing that shall not the, the judge of all the earth do right. And so you submit your anger to the Lord. Okay, so you feel fear. That fear is real. That's a spirit and it's trying to control your decisions. It's trying to get you to not do what the will of God is for you. It's trying to get you to let go of your believing God. Now, here's the trouble. <laughs> the further you, you move away from the will of God, the further you move away from the peace which God gives. And the closer you will come to the spirit of fear, which has torment. Oh, my goodness. You know that that's right. You have to act above it. And you must believe God. It's never good to make decisions from a place of fear. That's where not doing life on your own is so important. 
you need outside counsel. You need to be in a life group. Have some godly counsel. But the ultimate person to take your fears to is the Prince of Peace and search for his peace on the matter. And God has his peace waiting there for you. And it will come with every step of obedience to God's word that you do. But we must separate out the feeling of fear. My fear and my emotions may be real, but that doesn't mean acting on them is the right thing to do. My worst decisions in life were made out of fear. But to do the will of God is to bring peace back into your life. I constantly feel fear and it starts every Saturday night before I preach on Sunday. But God wants his people to act above their fears. And so number two way to overcome your fear is to submit your fears to daddy. Then finally, I can thank you for listening. The number three thing to do to overcome your fears is focus on God's presence and his love. Now that you're saved, now that you're in the family, focus on 1 Corinthians 13 kind of love, which is the way you deal with fear. But let's look at this practically. The children of Israel, as they came into the land God had promised them by faith, there were giants there, huge people, nine feet tall. And the spies said, you know what, we were like grasshoppers in their sight and they will destroy us if we go in there. We can't do it. But Joshua and Caleb believed God's promise and said, look, their protection has been lifted from them. They will be like bread to us. And they acted above their fears, choosing rather to believe the word of the Lord to them. And that's what I'm saying to you as a believer. The devil will always put the giant of fear at the gateway of God's promises to your life. And that giant will try to keep you by fear from obtaining the promise of God. But when God gives you that word, gives you that promise, that giant needs to be taken down because God's word brings the victory. What a blessing it is to move in after the giants have been in the lion. Big houses, big barns, big dinners. But 10 people came out and terrified a nation with a bad report. That's why you need godly counsel in your life. And two people said, no, we are well able to defeat them because yes, we see the giants, but God is bigger still. So let's go take our promise. So how big is your God? And how big is your devil? Apparently the universe cannot contain our God. Okay, so finally, let's look at two portions of scripture to help you. Coming from Psalm 23, verse four and five, and let's read them together. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, Death here is called the shadow. We as believers will never be touched by the angel of death. We merely walk through the shadow of him. I will fear no evil, it says, goes on to say, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Here is the confirmation that Jesus on the way to the cross experienced fear, but he overcame that fear because of the peace that comes with knowing God is with me. Verse five, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies and you anoint my head with oil and my cup runs over. And then look, let's look at Psalm 16, verse 8 to 11. Verse 8, I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope for you will not leave my soul in the grave or the grave of departed spirits, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. Speaking of Jesus, you will show me the path of life in your presence is the fullness of joy and at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. I have set the Lord always before me. You know, on the way to the cross, the devil was present with Jesus in his moment of weakness. And he is telling Jesus, you're a disappointment to your father. You're a huge failure. He's going to leave you rotten in the grave. Don't think he's coming for you. God will not come and get you out of there. But Jesus replies by faith in the word. Now listen to it. He will not allow his Holy One to see corruption. He's not going to leave me in the grave. And Satan in his presence 
And Satan, do you know in his presence there's fullness of joy? You will show me the path for me. And Jesus is confessing against the spirit of fear that he has set the Lord always before him. Do you know the Lord is always before you if you're a believer? So set your attention upon him. He's there. He hasn't left you. He's ever before you. If you will become aware of, her, of his presence. The spirit of fear is the, rea- is the reality you will experience without God. Peace is the reality you will experience with the presence of God. Faith in the word of God confirms the peace that comes with the knowing of God's word. The helmet of salvation confirms to us that God is with us. And by faith there are angels sent to minister to you and guard you. Since God be for us. We believers don't walk by sight, we walk by faith. Even though I can't see Jesus, I see the Lord always before me. Therefore, I will not be moved. The devil wants us to to turn our believing God into disbelieving and the protection of our God over us. But we can choose to trust him. We can choose to trust God today and he will do do so when we renew our minds on the spirit of fear and what he's about. So stop accepting fear as normal. It is of Satan and it's designed to keep us from having faith. And God's promises to us. But our Saviour can lead us into that promise if we keep our eyes on him and keep him always before us. Let me give you two scriptures to memorise perhaps that will help you in a time of fear. Why not take these down? Psalm 56 verse 3. What time I am afraid, I will trust in you. Oh, and this one's so good because it's totally opposite. Isaiah 12 verse 2. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. So here are the steps to to rest in the peace of God and to overcome all your fears. Why not take these down? Number one, admit your fears without shame. Hebrews 4 verse 5. Number two, submit your fears to Abba. James 4 verse 7. Number three, focus on God's love and his presence with you. 1 Corinthians 13 48. Number four, Take authority over a spirit of fear in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Acts 3 verse 6. And number 5, finally, face your fears by faith and watch him crumble. Luke 24 verse 36. Come on. Let's pray together and let's deal with this spirit of fear. Lord, thank you for the gift of peace. Thank you that you overcame Satan and all his fears. And right now we bind fear, that evil spirit sent to torment every demonic tormenting fear in our lives. We see you as the enemy of God, an enemy to do the will of God in our lives. We bind you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We choose peace. We choose healing. We choose life. We choose faith and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Lord, renew our minds, heal our hearts, and give us your supernatural peace, dumb peace that surpasses all understanding, that we might have courage in your promises to us so that we can live in victory. And we ask it in the name of the one who defeated fear so that we could live in victory too, We ask it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Why not make that your confession? You know, perhaps you've joined us today and don't know Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Do you know that his love for you was so strong that he went to the cross and took the punishment and torment for your sin? So that when that death angel comes looking for you someday, and he will come looking for us all, there's just one thing that will cause him to pass over you. It's when he sees the blood. When he sees the blood of Jesus covering over you, the blood tells him judgment has already been served on you. Not because of anything that you've done, but simply because you believed in Jesus and his blood to be your saviour. And then you will get to live on in the life of Jesus Christ, the innocent lamb of God, who gave up his life to give you life. Now that's love. And love has given you a choice today an invitation right now to receive Jesus, to receive the forgiveness of all your sins and all your shame, 
so that you can enter into the very presence of God and the peace of God. Oh, you know that, that makes sense. You see, every step towards God will bring your soul peace. Every step of disobedience away from God, the greater the torment becomes. Why not take a step towards God today? Jesus invites you into his rest and his peace. And here's how. If you will by faith, just admit your sin. Submit all that shame to the cleansing power of his blood. Believe on Jesus Christ as your saviour. And the Bible says, you will be saved. And you will get that lovely helmet of salvation that protects your mind from fear. And God will receive you into his family and adopt you as one of his own. And you will experience the love of God that can heal your every wound. He heals the broken heart. He shouts freedom, freedom to the captive. He sets the oppressed of Satan free. Isn't that wonderful? If you would like to be saved today, why not pray this prayer? Pray it with me, all, with all your heart. To repeat it after me. And repeat this after me. Father, I come to you in the name of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And I thank you for dying for me on the cross, for dying for all my sin. Thank you for your blood that covers all of that sin. And I pray, Lord, that you would forgive me for all my wrongdoing. Come in my heart, Lord. Come in love. Come in and change me from this day forward, from now to eternity. And may I serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, I pray. Surrounding me, let it pray at your name and still call the sea to still the rage in me to still every wave at your name, Jesus. Jesus, you make the darkness tremble, Jesus. Jesus. Silence be Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. Breathe, call these bones to live, call these lungs to sing once again.
darkness tremble Jesus Jesus you silence fear Jesus Jesus you make the darkness tremble Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Lord, you. Oh, Lord, you are Split the sea. You split the sea so I could walk right through it. My fears were drowned in perfect love. You rescued me and I will stand and say, I am a child. Let's declare this morning you split the sea. You split the sea so I could walk right through it. My fears were drowned in perfect love. You rescued me and I will stand and say, I am a child of One God. More time. You split the sea. Oh, yeah. You split the sea so I If you prayed that prayer, why not indicate to us by pressing the wee hands up icon on your screen and one of our pastors will help you with the decision that you have made and help you to take your next steps on your journey with Jesus. Thank you. Well done. It was grace that caused my heart to fear, but grace, my fears, relieved. Do you know, it's been so good to have you with us today. Uh, I just hope and pray that you keep yourself safe. Look forward to seeing you on Wednesday night uh, where we'll be finishing uh, this series that we have on if God is sovereign, since God is sovereign, why do we need to pray? We're going to answer that in, in, and I'm absolutely positive that you have never uh, probably have heard what I'm about to say on Wednesday night. It was such a revelation to me and I hope that you'll join with me as we look at why Jesus spent so much time in prayer as the Son of God and why you and I, he says, ought to do the same. Now that's a great question. Let's come together on Wednesday night at 8 p.m. and I tell you, it's going to be a tremendous night. I hope you'll join me. God bless you. And thanks for being with us today. Thank you so much for being with us today. If you have been impacted by the Word of God today, please go to our website or the app or join the chat online. Know we are praying for you and your family and we are here to support you in any way we can. And remember, kids and youth are also online to bring life to your home for your kids every single week. Keep interacting with us. We are here and we want to hear from you. Simply share online via social media with your world and tag us in your home church posts. We want to see what your Sunday experience looks like and we might even share them. Have a great week. Hi, I just want to take just a moment of time 
uh, during the service right now just to encourage you about our life groups. Life groups are small groups of, of people that meet together during the week uh, with common interests uh, and hobbies that they could enjoy each other's company and build friendships that, that's going to last um, for a lifetime. I want to encourage you to do that. Maybe you've been coming to church these last few weeks online and, and have been watching and then really enjoying what's been happening and the word that pastor's been bringing here in church. So if you have um, been enjoying that and you'd love to be a part of a community, I want to encourage you to jump over to our website at gpastors.co.uk forward slash life groups. And there's a very simple form there that you can fill in some of your details and one of our team will be in touch with you just to let you know how and where and what type of life groups are available for you to join that you could enjoy, not just today, but you could enjoy for the time to come. Why not do that during today? Take care.